And it's a longer hadith, but one phrase in it says, I acknowledge those sins, so give me forgiveness. So acknowledging your state, acknowledging that you don't deserve that, and yet you still need it. This is the essence of Iman and faith. And there are many other etiquettes and many other lessons and benefits that we can get from this story and from other stories. But we can conclude by mentioning that dua is the heart of worship. It is the foundation. It is the crux of one's relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why every single human being, even the atheist, must make dua once a time. He must make dua. When the atheist is going to face death, when the atheist is in a difficult situation, what does he say? Oh God, save me. He doesn't even believe in God, but he needs to make dua to God. Just like Iblis. He refuses to acknowledge servitude to Allah, and yet he needs to make dua. So dua is a basic element of being a human. The Muslim directs that dua to Allah alone, continuously, frequently, always making dua for all of the needs of his day and night. Aisha radiallahu anha said, the wife of the Prophet she said, if your shoelace breaks, make dua that Allah replaces it. Because unless Allah wills that it be replaced, it will never be replaced. You ask Allah everything because you need Allah for everything. And the sign of Iman is to know that you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the mu'min is asking and asking and asking and he never tires of asking. Man, the more you ask, the more he despises you. Allah, the more you ask, the more he loves you. This is the reality of our faith. This is the reality of our faith. The more you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you acknowledge that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord. O Muslim, realize that our honor lies in humbling ourselves before Al-Aziz, the one full of honor. And our strength and power comes from admitting our total helplessness and dependence upon Al-Qawi, Al-Qadir, Al-Aziz. And know that the strongest way of communicating between us and our Lord is the way of dua. Dua is our strongest weapon. Dua is our ultimate mode of communication. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي When my servants ask you about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Tell them I am close to them. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I am the one who responds to the dua of anyone who does dua when he makes dua. Look at the emphasis. Ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'an. Three times. I am the one that responds to the dua of the one who makes dua when he makes dua. Falyad'uni. Let them make dua to me. Let them worship me. Let them turn to me if they truly want to be guided and to be blessed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who truly worship Him in day and in night, in perseverance and in hardship, in ease and in comfort. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to live as Muslims and to die as Muslims and to be resurrected amongst the Muslims. Wa akhru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala abdi Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Jazakallah khair Sheikh Yasser Qadi for the very tremendous and beneficial talk. We will now have a time for question and answers. The format will be the same as I explained before, but I do stress that all of the questions must be relevant to the topic at hand. If it's not relevant to the topic, we will move to the next person in the queue. We'll start with the first question from the front mic. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Yasser. We love you for the sake of Allah. Uh, we learn dua of Adam alayhi salam. Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Adam alayhi salam is asking in plurals. Uh, can we say that shaitan is so mean he's asking just for himself and Adam salam is asking not for himself, not just his beloved wife, he's asking for all of us. And the second part, can you please teach us the Prophet's dua for thanking Allah Ta'ala for what we have? First and foremost, the statement that you said that we love you for the sake of Allah, I must respond to that and say that I also love all of you for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the 
the bonds of Iman have brought us all together here and the bonds of faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are stronger than blood bonds so I too bear witness and I testify and I want you to also to see this and I ask Allah azza wa to accept from us that our love be for his sake that our coming together be for his sake that just as we have come together on this land in this place for his sake that he also combines us together in Jannah under his throne Ameen with regards to your question it is a valid point to say that the mu'min thinks of everyone as well. And the hypocrite or the kafir is selfish. But to derive this from this dua might be a little bit problematic. Because remember, Adam was asking also on behalf of his wife, Hawa. So we can say that it is possible that the plural was based upon this. But the concept of what you have said is right. And that is why the mu'min, he makes dua for everyone, for the ummah, for his family. He even makes dua for those who have come before. Oh Allah, forgive all the Muslims who have come before. This is a sign of iman. But Iblis and others who follow him, all he's worried about is himself. So the point is valid, even though I don't know if that particular verse can be used as evidence. As for the second question, and that is, how do we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are many ways of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a spiritual way, there is a from the tongue, and there is from the body. The spiritual way is to acknowledge and realize that everything that you have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must have this sense inside of you. And to ignore or neglect this, it is a sign of disobedience. To say, I deserve this. To say, I earned it. This is not the sign of Iman. Rather, we say everything is from Allah and we believe this in our hearts. So the example of the man in Surah Al-Kahf who owns the two gardens, he said, Hadha li. This is mine. I earned it. I deserve it. This is not the sign of Iman. This is a sign of Kufr and that's why Allah called him a Kafir in the Quran. So this is spiritual acknowledgement. From the tongue, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why his brother who was arguing with him, he said, why don't you say, Masha Allah la quwata illa billah when you enter the garden? Why don't you ascribe the blessing to Allah and not to yourself? And also to say, Alhamdulillah, this is how we thank Allah. And the third way we said is from the body. And the body, how we thank Allah is by using this blessing to come closer to him and not by using the blessing to become a barrier between him. Allah blessed us with money. We use money to come closer to Him. We don't use money to become engrossed in this world and forget about Allah. Allah blessed us with wife, with children. We use those blessings to thank Allah, come closer to Him. We don't become involved with them to forget about Allah. So we thank Allah from our hearts. We thank Allah from our tongue. And we thank Allah Azza wa Jal from our limbs. The next question from the rear mic. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Arif and I'm a chartered accountant. Uh, at times we are confused as to what we want uh, when we are asking Allah. We don't know what is right for our kira. I am aware that as istikhara we have to do. I am just after the right way of doing it, of performing it, as to how long do we take before making a decision and how do we make a decision. I had another question. I'm just wondering, is it necessary to raise your hands before asking anything from Allah? Or can you ask something while you're traveling or while you're about to go to sleep or you're just sitting, etc.? Okay, uh, the first question is about the content of what you ask to Allah. What if you don't know if it's good for you? Realize that when you ask Allah for something of the next world, then you know that it is good for you. You want Jannah, there is no way Jannah is not good for you, right? You want to be saved from the fire of hell, that is definitely good for you. You want forgiveness, this is something you need. So anything to do with spiritual matters, with the hereafter, with Allah's mercy, then you know that you need it. But the question arises, how about something of this world? The examples I gave of a job or the classic situation of marriage, right? You don't know, should I get married to this person or not? Now, you have two things that you should do. Firstly, most importantly, dua ul istikhara, which is a special type of dua that Allah has blessed the ummah with. Allah has blessed the ummah with. And it is a tool that unfortunately many of us have completely abandoned. It is a blessing that we keep locked in our houses, in our treasures, and never ever open. It is a blessing that Allah has given all of us. 
but many of us don't utilize it. Dua al istikhara is a dua that you make, that you pray to Allah when you are faced with a worldly decision. You don't pray istikhara for Jannah or not, you want Jannah, okay? But for two jobs, you pray istikhara. For marrying a certain person, should I propose, should I not propose, you pray istikhara. For anything of major importance, you pray istikhara. 